Today's video is made possible by A Data. All right, man. Today has been one hell of a day. Now, this launch is going to be probably one of the biggest of the year. NVIDIA had pretty damn crazy timing with this. Instead of waiting till Christmas time, they decided to release this Shiznik during the summertime. So instead of getting a tan, we will remain all spotly and white and be indoors fragging the hell out of stuff. Now, hope you guys appreciate all the coverage that we have done today. We've been all day long banging this stuff out. If so, I would really appreciate if you guys would hit that like button and show us that you guys appreciate the coverage. So with that said, let's jump in. Let's check out the features, what the card's all about, and then how it performs against the competition in our benchmark comparisons. Let's go. All right, so the GTX 780 size is in at 10.5 inches in length, a real lady pleaser. It's also four inches in height and is based off a dual slot design. Now the cooling, it's based off the Titan design and features a copper vapor chamber, dual slot aluminum heatsink, and a blower style fan, which combined offers much quieter performance. Now the card features the same GK110 also found in the GTX Titan. It has 50% more CUDA cores in the GTX 680 with 2,350 compared to the 1536 found on the GTX 680. The GTX 780 also features 3 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory through a 384-bit memory interface, compared to the GTX 680, which has 2 gigabytes of memory and a 256-bit memory interface. Now, as far as clock speeds are concerned, the 780 has a core clock of 863 MHz, which dynamically boosts to 900 MHz via GPU Boost 2.0. The original GPU Boost 1.0 was designed to reach the highest possible clock speed while remaining within a predefined power target. But NVIDIA determined that the GPU temperature is often a bigger inhibitor of performance than the GPU power. So the boost clock speeds are based on the GPU temperature target instead of the GPU power target in Boost 2.0. The default temperature is set to 80 Celsius, so the GPU will automatically boost to the highest clock frequencies possible as long as the GPU temperature remains at 80 Celsius. Now because GPU Boost 2.0 is based off the temperature target, you can raise the temperature limit to increase boost speeds or decrease the target to lower boost speeds and keep the card running cooler. As far as power requirements go, the GTX 780 requires one 8-pin PCI power connector and one 6-pin PCI power connector, which results in a total TDP of 250 watts. One thing to be noted, though, is this is more than the GTX 680, which totaled 195 watts of TDP and only required two 6-pin power connectors. As far as connectivity goes, on the rear I.O. we see two dual-link DVIs, one HDMI and one standard DisplayPort connector. Now, before we jump in and see the performance benchmarks, let's talk about something else that's really important that NVIDIA wants you to know. Not only when you buy the 780, you buy in the card, you actually buy all the other things that NVIDIA has to offer, including their new NVIDIA GeForce experience. Now, previously they had a beta version of this out and it actually got 2.5 million downloads from around the world. But now the actual real deal version comes bundled with your GTX 780. Now some of the cool things is this thing makes sure your drivers are always up to date and installed automatically. And it checks and offers optimized game settings so you get the maximum in game detail while squeezing the most performance out of your card at the same time. Now okay, I know many of you are going to gawk when you hear the word optimized settings. You're gonna be like, yeah, yeah, whatever, that's some total bull crap. But you know what? Do some experimentation and check it out for yourself. I think you'll be pretty surprised at how this actually works, because it's pretty cool, you know? NVIDIA goes in there, and with the games that it actually can do, it'll go in there and actually make them perform better. And if you're missing any extra detail that you could have been getting and didn't know about, it, it'll let you know that as well. Plus, if there's a new patch out or your driver's out of date, all this stuff will be told to you and you'll be able to automatically update it all through the GeForce experience. So with that said, it's time to rock out and let's hit those benchmarks. <laughs>
guess I'm still rocking out and the song has ended. Okay, well that song rocks, I like to rock out to it. Now, a lot of you folks always ask, what in the heck is that song? Where can I get it? Well, that song is The Human Zoo, written by yours truly and my friend Jonathan Morrison from TLD. So we wrote that song and it's available for you guys to listen to it on Spotify. If you're interested in buying it, you guys can check it out all kinds of places. Down there below that like button, which I know you guys are gonna beat the shit out of, we'll have links to all the places where you guys can buy that song. It's usually like between 79 and 99 cents. Beware of where you go though, so you don't get it from some weird pirate place. And if you guys wanna go pirate it somewhere which you might do that'll hurt our feelings but hey you're welcome to do so we can't stop you as long as you're listening to the music and rocking out we still love you so like i said in the very beginning of the video this video was brought possible by the people over at a data we want to thank them very much for their support now before we close out this video there's a couple other things i want to talk about just to totally keep it real right now if you're an owner and you have a gtx 680 is there really any reason for you to upgrade well, that we'll have to talk about. Now, if you're doing 1920 by 1080p and that's all you're doing, then I would actually say no. If you're using a single monitor and you're doing that, there's really no reason to upgrade. Now, if you're somebody who actually wants to do multi-monitor technology or you want to play 2560 resolutions, well then hell yeah, baby, this card kicks in and it works really, really well at those things. Now, also one thing to take into consideration, between the 7970 and this, well yeah, the 7970 is much cheaper and you guys all know AMD is just basically giving tons of games with their card. But if you're looking for the absolute highest end card, there's nothing that can beat the GeForce GTX 780 at this price range. Let's just think about this. The 7990 and both the Titan are both cards that cost $1,000. This card is almost $400 cheaper than either one one of them and has scores that are very, very competitive. I think NVIDIA is going to have a very, very salesworthy card in their hands and these things are going to move off the shelf. Plus, for better overclocking, I'm sure that many people are going to want to get a hold of the reference-based cards because a lot of the stuff that comes out for aftermarket cooling, such as liquid cooling, is usually based on the reference-based cards. Now, we know Asus, Gigabyte, others, they're going to do their own aftermarket cooling solutions and release those cards, and we should see those here also on Tech of Tomorrow. So, peace out, folks. Hope you enjoyed these videos today. If you missed anything at all, make sure you check it out down below the like button in the description because it'll all be there. We'll see you guys tomorrow with more GTX 780 goodness. Any way for them to win right now unless they use like that time space continuum thing and you know travel back in time with a spaceship or... What is